we can topsy turvy this country. You know that? Without shedding of blood, without killing anybody. It can be done. That's the destiny Allah is offering it to us. He said, Leave you the hero who Allah deen kulle. He's given you a deen. That's to master, overcome, and supersede them all. Bulldoze them all. Wallahu kadiha al mushrikun. Now, mind how the mushrik might not like it. This is the destiny of his deen. And he repeats it again. Another place in the Quran, same formula. Then he repeats again. He it is who has sent his messenger with guidance, and with the religion of truth, that it may prevail, overcome and supersede every other deen, whether it be Hinduism, Buddhism, Christianism, Communism, Judaism, every ism, Islam is destined to master them all. Wakafa billahi shahida. And enough is Allah is a witness to this fact that He's going to make His deen to prevail. A'uzu billahi min shaitani rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Ya ayuh al-lazina amanu. Kunu awamina bil qist. Shuhada alillahi. Walau ala anfusikum. Awil walidain. Wal aqarabin. An yakun ghaniyan aw faqiran. Wallahu awla bihima. Sadaqallah. Sadaqallah al-Muran Azim. I quoted, my dear brethren, I quoted to you an ayah from the Holy Quran from Surah Nisa. Surah Nisa happens to be the fourth chapter, ayah number 135. So in the ayah I read to you from Surah Nisa, uh, you find that, how do you find as a Surah Nisa? You found it. Another way of getting this ayah it's an ayah talking about justice. So in this Quran, in this index and the J, look for justice. And there are seven different places where this word justice is mentioned. Justice. Allah is just. He wants you to be just. Seven different places. You can check them up. This one is chapter 4, verse 135. Allah says, Ya Yuhallazina Amanu. He's addressing those who believe, those who have people who have faith. Ya Yuhallazina Amanu. Kunu Kawamina Bil Qist. So stand up firmly for justice. Wala wala anfusikum. Even if it goes against yourself. Here's a start. You know, we can't do justice. Look around you. Can we do justice? Are we doing justice to our wives, our children, our neighbors, our brothers in giving of the inheritance? Brother eats away the sister's inheritance because he says, look, if I give the inheritance, what is due to her, her husband will eat it up. So he, he, God, he eats it up. You know that? We don't give inheritance to our children, but what is due to our sisters, we don't give. To our daughters, we don't give. The son-in-law will eat it up. Can you do justice? There's a conflict of interest. Now, when you sit down and reason, and the man is reasoning with you, he said, look, we entered into a contract. Like this, like this, like that. And now, according to that, I am entitled to 50%. But you know, it's going to go against you now. You know that is so. So he said, yes, but you see, you know, I used to work night time, little extra time. I have to do this and I have to do that, so I deserve a bigger share. But look, we had bargained 50-50. We were going to share equally. He said, yes, but you see, are you, can you do justice against yourself? If it goes against yourself, can you do say, yes, mm -hmm. no, brother, you are right. I owe you this, let me give it to him. Can you do it? Very difficult. Very difficult, because we are not trained for that. We are still animals. We want to grab, grab, grab. You don't want to give what is due to somebody else. We do, can't do justice because we are not programmed with justice. And fusikum, awil walidain. Or even if it goes against your parents, your father and your mother. You come home, your mother is complaining, that guy next door, you know, our little hen, murgi, it went into his yard and the guy hit it with a stone and broke the leg. Our hen. Murgi, Murgi, you know, poultry. He broke the leg. We are now worked up into a frenzy. You want to go and fight that fellow, no? Yes. Your mother is crying. 
about the chicken. So you want to put up a fight. You're not asking, Ma, what was our fowl doing in the other neighbor's yard? Hmm? He says, that person there, he plants the bhaji, coriander, mint, and our fowl goes and scratches it up. Is it right? Can you tell that to your ma? <laughs> You're going to take her part. Your ma is crying, you must go and fight for her. A dispute between your father and somebody else. You're going to take your father's side. No? You don't want to hear what is right and wrong. Your father is your father, then you must take his side. Allah says, no, no, no. Even if it goes against your father or your mother. Wal or your relations. So Allah says, I want to protect people's interests. That is a poor man. Let me take his side. Allah says, no, you don't do that. That's not your job. Protecting people's interests is not your job. Your job is to do justice. That's what Allah says. Protecting people... No, no, you listen and according to your God-given insight, sense of justice and fair play, whatever is to be done, you have to do. You don't say, I protect this fellow's interest because he's poor, he's weak, or I don't care, this man is rich, he can afford, let him pay. You don't do that. Now, this justice, are we capable of doing it? The answer is no. You know why? Because it needs a constant reminder. And Allah is giving it to us. In the Holy Quran, you reading, you bacha the Quran, what are you bachaing? There's instructions. If you only understood what is Allah is telling you, He's telling you, you say, no man, I must do justice. Mm -hmm. Any cost, I must do justice. Even if my son's head is involved, it has to be chopped off. He has been selling drugs. My son. He said, well, you know, you do this like that, you, know, you bribe this fellow and can get off. I said, mm -hmm. let him pay the price. Can I do that? The only time I can do that is, if I was constantly reminding myself, programming myself, brainwashing myself, I must do justice. I must do justice. Never mind if it's my son. And never mind if it's my father or my mother. Never mind if it's my wife. If I keep on telling myself, reminding myself, Allah's kalam, Wallah, you'll be able to do justice. Otherwise, it doesn't work. Just for reading, for recitation, beautiful. You know, when I get lawyers coming to my office, lawyers, I show them this beauty of the Quran. He will appreciate the man who is studying law. So I open the book for him. Anybody, anybody comes along, what's your profession? The guy says, he's a journalist. I say, look, I show you in the Quran, miracle of journalism. You are a lawyer, man doing justice. I said, look, look, look. Bring it here, Salih. Look what this book says about justice. Sit down, sit down. And I read this verse. There are so many verses. I read this verse. And the commentary. I said, chapter 4. I'm looking, chapter 4. Verse 135. I found it. I found it. Allah says, O you who believe, stand out firmly for justice as witnesses to God. Justice is Allah's attribute and when you stand up for it, you are standing for God. He gives you a commentary, this man, listen to his English. The substance of the message and the language that he is using. He says, justice is God's attributes. It's an attribute of God. Allah has got 99 names and one of these names is he is Al-Haq. He is just. So justice is God's attribute. And to stand firm for justice is to be a witness to God. It is to witness to Allah. You stand for justice is standing for Allah. Even if it is detrimental to our own interests. As we perceive it. We think it is going against our interest. Wallah it is not. You do justice and you feel hurt. That I have to now shell out hundred runs, thousand runs has to go. You think it's going against your interest, self-interest. As you see it, Allah says no. As you see it, but it's not going against your interest. It will be in your interest to do justice. How Allah rewards you, 
in many different ways for you having done justice, what benefits you're going to get in the future? That you are a man who can stand up for justice. You find the whole world will come to your door. Like our Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wasallam, you know, even before Nubuwa, the title that they gave him, As-Sadiqul Wa'adul Ameen. If you go for Hajj, those of you who have been for Hajj, you go to Medina, the tomb of our Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and there are grooves, metal grooves, on which are inscribed La ilaha illallah al malikul haqqul mubeen Muhammadur Rasulullah al sadiqul wadul ameen Again, ten times this verse is repeated there. Ten times. Or is it fifteen? I have the picture of that in my office. I counted it about ten or fifteen. There are three grills, five, five, five. La ilaha illallah al malikul haqqul mubeen Muhammadur Rasulullah As-Sadiqul Wa'adul Ameen As-Sadiqul Wa'adul Ameen is not from the Quran This is the tribute that the Mushriks of Makkah paid to him His As-Sadiqul Wa'ad a man who fulfills his promises Al-Ameen the truthful, the faithful, the trustworthy just, the man is just even if it goes against our own interests as we conceive them or the interest of those who are near and dear to us. According to the Latin saying, let justice be done, though heaven should fall. But Islamic justice is something higher than the formal justice of the Roman law or any other human law. It is even more penetrative than the subtler justice in the speculation of the Greek philosophers. It searches out the innermost motives because we are to act as in the presence of Allah, as if Allah is present, He's a witness, He knows what is in your heart and mind. Now you open your mouth, you're thinking that Allah is listening, He knows what is going through your heart and mind. It searches out the innermost motives because we are to act as in the presence of Allah, to whom all things, acts and motives are known. He continues on what I've already said, He says, some people may be inclined to favor the rich because they expect something from them. Some people may be inclined to favor the poor because they are generally helpless. So these are your considerations. The man is helpless, help him. The guy is rich. So my butter is buttered that side. Bread is buttered that side. Because they are generally rich. Partiality in either case is wrong. Be just without fear or favor. Both the rich and the poor under God's protection as far as their legitimate interests are concerned. But they cannot expect to be favored at the expense of others and he Allah can protect their interests far better than any man all this you're getting in this book language philosophy language philosophy right guidance understanding when you read this and you talk about this it changes your life it must change your life that's the purpose of the book is to change our lives but we read it for sawab, for blessings, and I believe, wallah, I believe that Allah will give you sawab. But you see, we are bargaining with Allah, very cheap. You are getting something in return, very cheap. You are bargaining for 10 to 1. When you can get million to 1. Do business with him, million to 1. Be hisab, without account. <laughs> you can do business with him. No counts. How? You read with understanding and that motivates you into action. A million for reward. Do that type of business. You don't have to keep count. He is a good accountant. He's got his accountants with us. But we say he is the most perfect accountant. Nothing can go wrong. Your niya is right is getting credited, getting credited. On the day of judgment, you will get everything more than what you deserve. A hundredfold reward, a thousandfold reward, a millionfold reward for all the little things that we have been doing. Our salat, our zakat, our hajj, our psalm. For everything, more than what you deserve. <coughs> and when everything is given to you, eh, mountain size blessings 
then another Himalayan, like the Himalaya, another heap of blessings. See, Abhayatana, what is this for now? Look, I can see, all right, I have been praying, you know, not too good. My mind was not always there, but uh, I'm, I'm grateful that you accepted all my, those weak salats of ours. What is this, really? Our fasting, what is it, really? Our zakat, our hajj, what is it, really? Really speaking, according to his absolute standard, what are they? Nothing, Allah, nothing. They are acts. We are just putting up acts, good acts. Allah accepts. He knows that we are weak. He accepts. But for that, he has given you a million fold reward for that. And now another Himalayan heap of blessings. See, Abhari Tala, what is this for now? So these are for your good intentions. Can you imagine? Your good intentions. A man came to you. He said, you know, we're putting up a masjid. I need some help. Please help us. Mm -hmm. How much? What do you need? He says, you know, we need another 50,000 rams to complete the job. It hurts you. He says, man, this work, work is worth assisting. If Allah had given me that 50,000 rams, I wouldn't allow this man to go around begging. That's all. You got only five runs. Or fifty runs you can spare. You give it to him. Sincere you believe so. All that is getting credit to your account. Believe me. Wallah, this is Islam. The very thoughts going through your mind, sincerely you had no money. You are not thinking, well, if I just talk like this, I'm going to get a million fold. Mm -hmm. you're, you're, you feel in your heart that if Allah had given it to me, I would have done this. He's printing hundred thousand Qurans. What will it cost? This is going to cost him two million. This is going to be quite a struggle. He said, yes. If I had the two million, I would tell him, I said, go, print the hundred thousand and take the money from me. Tell the guy to send me the account. That's all. You have not given a cent. But you sincerely feel that way. You got a reward for that hundred thousand Qurans. I'm very, very grateful for this opportunity of coming and sharing these thoughts. It was justice and equality. I could have turned it into justice and race. You know, standards of judging. But it goes on. It, and it goes on. I would rather that if you have any questions, any question regarding the thing that I have spoken or things other than that, you know, where a Christian missionary was harassing you about something, you did give an answer, the best answer that you had, the best response that you could, but you felt that it was not good enough. Said, uncle, how would you have handled this? In other words, I share with you. Maybe your answer was better than anything that I can imagine for myself. I will be learning from you. But, he said, uncle, how would you have answered this? Uncle, how would you have de dealt with this? So in other words, now I'm sharing with you that you in turn can use it, get better armed. So if there are any questions, I'll be happy to answer those questions of yours. We can have half an hour given to question time. Can we have some questions from my brothers? We must learn to open our mouths. See, because otherwise we are terrified. The knowledge is there, but if you can't open your mouth, nobody knows. You have to learn to open your mouth. Speak! We have stopped speaking. You know, talking about deen, sharing deen. So easy, Wallah, it's so easy. Yesterday was July handicap. No? I'm sure your neighbors, non-Muslim, must have asked you, which horse you're backing? Then, opportunity. Wallah, the opportunities, they are bound to preach Islam. The man is asking you, which horse did you back? This is your favorite. She said, no, we are Muslims, you see. We in Islam, we are told, we are not to gamble. Not one cent. Said, no, not one cent. So you can't take a chance, even once a year, you know, one run. He said, no, not even that. We have a sure winner, we back with him, we bet with him, sure winner. And he's telling us, The similitude, the example of him who spends his substance in the way of Allah. Is that of a grain of corn, you plant, you get seven cobs. And fi kulli sumbulatim and everyone a hundred grains. Look, seven hundred to one. No bookie gives you that. That odds. You know that? No bookie. 700 to 1. And it doesn't stop even there. Allah doesn't stop with 700 to 1. 
So Allah Yudai fully man yasha, Wallahu wasun alim. And he gives many full increases to whom he pleases. He can reward you a million fold. I do my betting with him in his way. I give, I spend, and I know I'm a sure winner. So any excuse how you get started, that's your job, that's our job, the job of the Muslim. This is a perpetual job, it's not a job for the professionals. Ahmad Didat must do the job. Sheikh Najjar must do the job. Sheikh Nazim must do the job. What's wrong with you? No, but Allah won't ask you. Why didn't you preach like Ahmad Didat? Why didn't you argue and debate like Ahmad Didat? He won't ask you that. He'll only ask you, you, according to your capacity, your understanding, did you do the job? And if we can say, Ya Bari Tala, to the best of my ability, I tried. It's good enough. Well, it's good enough. He won't ask you, why didn't you do like Didat? Why didn't you compete with Didat? No. You, according to what you know, did you? So, come, my dear brother, anything that you want to know, don't be shy. Come forward, I'm your brother, elder brother. You share with me, I share with you. Yes, brother. <laughs> yes. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. You see, my brethren, I keep on telling wherever I go in the world, I am a specialist. You know what's a specialist? The man who specializes. Right? When you are sick, you go to the general practitioner. And he sees something, so it's beyond his grasp, your sickness. Then he, he thinks, man, this guy's got some snick, uh, skin sickness. He sends you to a skin specialist. This guy, I think he's got some cancerous growth. He said, now you go along for some way and you have this thing done and you know, specialist. This is the world of specialization. Now you go to the specialist and you ask for some simple problem. He said, look, go and see a general practitioner. This is the world of specialization. I have specialized in dealing with the Jew, dealing with the Christian, dealing with the Hindu, dealing with the atheist, the agnostic, the guy who said there is no God. That's my field. Now when you ask a man something regarding his field, he feels happy and proud to share it with you. Because now he's shining. You see, he's brilliant. You ask him somewhere about which he's going to fumble now, you know, actually what you do is you're degrading him. Because now I have to come down and apologize. I said, look brother, you say, look man, this is something beyond my understanding. I don't understand. I don't know how to solve your problem. You have to go to your sheikhs and imams. And the best way to me, this problem, look, I don't know. I was telling somebody, might be cynical. I said, you know, where are the giants of these two sides? There must be two leaders. One says this, one says that. I said, you know what we should do? Lock them in a room. These two guys. And said, you fight it out. Either with your mind or with your fists. And the guy who comes out alive will follow him. <laughs> Look, no more, wallah, no problems whatsoever. If you do that, but nobody will listen to me. <laughs> this is my philosophy. I said, Look, lock them up in a room, the giants of the both sides. Whoever these controversialists are, lock them in a room. He said, now look, you guys, you fight it out. You come to some agreement, or you fight it out, with tooth and nail, and the guy who comes out alive will follow him. <laughs> Wallah, they won't have any conflict. No brother, this is beyond my capacity. This is for the alims, the learned men, they must. Because if I start putting my nose into everything, the job that I'm doing, I'm involved in. Nobody is doing that. Nobody is doing what I'm doing. Am I right or am I wrong? Now I'll be taken off. Now I'm fighting everybody because now I'm here 50-50, I'm sure. 50-50. If I say this guy is right, 50% my enemies. If I say this side is right, that's 50% of my... What am I doing? I want you all to help me at the Good Hope Center tomorrow. Not to now... I can't. I haven't got the wisdom of Solomon. You know Solomon alayhi salam? He was very wise. I am no Solomon. Just one like you. I said, leave me in peace in the work that I am doing. In that work, bring me problems. Because you are doing me a favor. If I haven't got the answer, you are doing me a favor. I don't like it. That I confess, look, I haven't got the answer for that. That this Jew said you this and mm, I don't know what to say. This Christian said, why are you circumcised? 
What's all this? What do you want to do? You think Allah needs that? Come to me. Talk to me. I give you. If I can't, I feel ashamed of myself. I will find the answer. Not today. Tomorrow. I'll find the answer. Help some other people somewhere else. So you are doing me a favor. Making me to think. But these problems, brother, are <laughs> beyond me. Forgive me. Yes, brothers. Brother yes, brother. Uh, I saw in last night's I think uh, newspaper uh, regarding the uh, a statement the, that uh, Brother Dida speaks about uh, the problems of South Africa uh, generally uh, in, uh, uh, with the uh, race problem and Islam to solve the problem. How yes. does Brother Dida see that? That's correct. You see, I think I had made a statement that the the problem, solution to the problems of South Africa, this racial problem, only Islam can solve. Everybody must become Muslim. I know it sounds like a far-fetched thing, imagine, you know, you say this guy is, you know, daydreaming or what. But Allah is telling you in the Quran, He has given you a deen, a way of life. He said, a deen, a way of life that is to master, overcome and supersede them all. Bulldoze them all. And I believe that. Allah tells me that and Islam gives you the solution. There is a problem of race in this country. Biggest problem. You know racism. We are all racist, you know that. To some degree. We might not be as bad as a white man, but we can't say we are free from that sickness. Nobody can say. The Malay, you know he feels he's better than the colored, no? Yes. Don't lie. The, the Kokni feels he's better than the Malay, no? In your heart and mind. Maybe we don't say so. <laughs> this is the nature of man. All of us are like that. We are all sick. We are all sick. Some more sick than the other. Solution. Allah gives it to us in the Quran. We make able, everybody to accept that. And we program ourselves with that. That sickness will decrease. Allah says, Ya Yohannas, O mankind, Inna khalakna kum min zakarim wa unsa. So most certainly, we have created you all from a single pair of a male and a female. Wajaalna kum shuub wa kabaila, and it is we who have made you into nations and tribes. What for? To discriminate against one another? No. He says, Allah says, Lita arafu, that you may recognize one another. These are convenient labels. This Ahmad is a Kokani, this Ahmad is a Malay, this Ahmad is a Surti, this Ahmad is a Nigerian, this Ahmad is a Zulu, this Ahmad is a Khaza, this is Ahmad is a Bura. <laughs> now these are convenient labels, so we can recognize, look, your forefathers invented it, the Malay. These surnames you carry, how did you carry? Same! For identity. You see, the white man enslaving your great grandfathers, brought them from Indonesia, from Malaysia, you can't even practice, you can't even pray like this. So you have to do things in secret, in hiding. This man's house, that man's place, that farm, that day, you have to run around like wild bucks. That's how you did it. But when you meet in, that, in those conditions, to bacha the Quran, Yasin Sharif, Allah's names, you want to know who's who? I say, ah, what's your name? I say, Yusuf. And you? I say, Ibrahim. You? Dawood. You? Muhammad. You? Yusuf. You? Muhammad. You? Dawood. Right, but how do you know who's who now? We're talking about this Yusuf. So which Yusuf? You know, I said that Yusuf. is a which one? He's a guy who worked for Fenter, man. So he becomes Yusuf Fenter. <laughs> that Muhammad... He works for Hendrix, you know, Hendrix has enslaved him. Here's Muhammad Hendrix. Can you see that? For identity. Now we have to give Yusuf, 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 how many Yusufs? We have to give the identity, we say, look, this is Yusuf Hendrix, this is Yusuf, um, and this is Johnson. You know, Yusuf Johnson, and this is Yusuf. So that is how convenient labels you created for yourselves to recognize one another. Allah Bari Ta'ala on a global scale, He created convenient labels, different, different people, so we can recognize them. But we all have a sickness. Who is better among the lot now? I say we. My nation. You know my nation. I'm a Surti. 
We say we are the Aryans, the master race. We conquered India 5,000 years ago, my forefathers. My nation belongs to that Moraji Desai, the guy who was ruling India, Prime Minister. Nehru's nation, that's my nation. If I was not a Muslim, I'll be boasting. I'm an Aryan, Arya. So the sickness is there. For 5,000 years, the thing is there. We are being programmed. 5,000 years, the same sickness. We are better than the other fellow. In my village, our villagers, every villager feels he's better than the other villager. There's a river in between. I won't give my daughter to the guy on the other side because that's like a foreign country. On the other side of the river. Salt, salt river. One side is another nation. Another side is another nation of Malays. Can you imagine? This guy on the west side, he won't give his daughter to the guy on the east side. That's how we were in India. This is there. Everybody feels. The German feels he is topmost. The Englishman feels he is topmost. The Buddha feels he is the topmost. Everybody feels he is the topmost. You know that? This is the sickness of man. This is how man feels. To give him happiness. Consolation. So what are you going to do about that sickness? So Allah is telling you. He said, no, no, no. These are all false standards. Standard acceptable in his sight? He said, inna akramakum, inna Allahi atkakum. Most certainly, the noblest in Allah's sight is he who is the best in conduct. Not black or white. Not Kokni or Malay. Not Arab or Ajam the best in conduct. So this is the only standard. He says don't drink. He doesn't say you Indian Muslim mustn't drink. No. He says the whole of humanity. Don't touch that abomination. It's an abomination of Satan's handiwork. Don't gamble. He doesn't say the Muslim mustn't gamble, the others must. He says no, no, no. no. No, but people don't gamble. So in other words a happier community. No drinking, no gambling, no fortune telling, no idol worship. So. Islam has a solution to the problem of race. Nobody has it. No other nation, no other system has the problem of race. Islam has the solution. So I said, look, accept Islam. In Medina, before our Nabi Karim sallam, he said his sacred feet, they were the Aus and the Hajraj, two tribes. And these tribes were on the verge of exterminating one another. Fighting, fighting, fighting over little, little things, killing one another. They are all Arabs, they are all Quraysh. But they are two different tribes. They are killing one another. Until our Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said his sacred feet in Medina and he offered them Hablillah, the rope of Allah. Allah says, Wa'atasimu bi hablillahi jamiyun wa la tafarraku. Hold fast to the rope of Allah. What is this rope? You see from dangling from heaven? No. Allah's kalam. The Holy Quran, that's the rope. Allah wants you to hold on. Once you all, downing humanity, all of us, when you hold to that, that becomes your common denominator, your mutual support will save you all. Go to the book. We are not going to the book. All of us. We are not going to the book. The book of Allah. Who are we going to? To our leaders. We have our heroes. You know that? My heroes are from Jalalabad. So what that guy says, I accept. The guy from Rawal Pindi, what he knows about Islam. The guy from Al-Azhar, what he knows about Islam. The guy who comes from Kolivar from Al-Azhar, he said, this Hindi fellow, what does he know about Islam? This is the sickness. We got our own heroes. We are hero worshippers. We are not worshipping Allah, we are worshipping our heroes. Therefore, that strife, this, all this problem is hero worshipping. You go to Allah's Kalam, sincerely, all together, say, look, let's see what Allah says. And wallah, you'll find the answers there. And even if you make a mistake, Allah will reward you. Two rewards. Or one reward. You make a mistake sincerely. You go to the Quran and you misunderstood and you applied it. Not for mischief making, but you un misunderstood, you applied it, Allah will give you one reward for that. If you applied it right, He'll give you ten. There's no punishment. On the day of judgment, they say, look, you know, did that. <laughs> you had it all wrong, man. <laughs> my, my Lord, he says, look, I didn't know. He said, what was it? He said, no, it was like this. Not the way you understood. Wallah, no punishment. If mischief was not your intention. But I want to create mischief. I want to create division. I want to create people to follow me. Against the other fellow. How can I create strife? That people have to now take sides. That is shaitani. Satani. Devilish. We will be punished for it. Forget the heroes. 
go to Allah's kalam. It becomes a common denominator. Then we can talk. So what does Allah say on this subject? What does Allah say? Let's have a look. Is there an ayah about this in the Quran? He says, yes, says, let's have a look. And Allah has given you intelligence. You read it, he says, no man, it makes sense. This is the answer. What do we do with Rushdi? Go to the Quran. Allah tells you what to do. But no, no, I have my heroes. Shall I follow this fellow or that fellow? If it appears that I'm following that guy, then he's, he's the enemy of my hero. So I can't agree with him. I must agree with my hero. What does he say? Now that means you have to go on the day of judgment. Allah will put us with our heroes. If he goes to hell, you'll have to go to hell with him. No. Here the answer is there. The solution to our problems is here in Allah's kalam. Wallah. And there is nothing wet or dry that is not in the book of God. Allah says. Everything that you want, that you need is all there. But you don't know the book. I'm asking people. I delivered a lecture. That do you know that crucifixion is in the Quran? I said, come on, put up your hands. How many of you know? That means you know from, from, from reading the Quran that crucifying a person, if the person has done certain mischievous things, that person can be crucified. Very horrible death. You know, like they say what they did to Jesus. We can do to anybody. For certain mischievous behavior, beliefs, we can crucify the man. Ahmad Didat or Saleh Muhammad or whoever for certain crimes the guy deserves to be crucified if we had the power and the rule if Allah says so this guy deserves to be crucified I said how many of you know that in the Quran this is the type of punishment that you can meet out to certain types of people who commit certain sins crimes please put up your hands you know there was only one person. 